The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I am on the 30 Surf from Chaparral. Now, since this boat is designed around surfing, let's take a look at the features that make it capable of doing that. It has to start with this EFX electric folding arch that gives us a tow point seven feet off the deck, JL Audio speakers, an all around nav light, and a bimini can be added to the forward and aft sections. And notice how the boat can still be operated with the tower in the lowered position. That's a great feature when we're getting under a low bridge. There's a ballast sack in the index storage compartment. This will add 1,080 pounds of ballast. Now the Malibu surf gates are these gates that come out from either side of the boat depending on which side you want to surf on. Now notice we've got two 7 inch gauges. If we didn't have the surf package we would have two Simrads but because we have the surf package we get the medallion screen that also gives us control of the surf features. This gives us our speed, control of the ballast tank and control of the surf gates for whichever side we want them on. And notice also on the surrounding area is the home page. We can control the speed, turn the cruise on and off, get our fuel level, depth, and control our audio system. And of course, below the water, Volvo Penta's forward-facing drive. Now let's look over the rest of the features on the 30 Surf, starting in the cockpit. It has to start with the L-shaped seating. Notice that the corner is curved, so we can even utilize that space, and directly across is a five foot three inch seat. There's storage under one, two, three seats, and under this section, there's storage for a dedicated 36 quart carry-on cooler. The cockpit table adds to the functionality and notice that Chaparral adds a teak inlay on this one. And notice there's dedicated storage for the table in the index storage compartment. Let's take a look at materials for a minute. Notice the upholstery, 37 ounce Naga hide with a 10 mil stain resistant and UV protected top coat. Chaparral uses differing materials, custom embroidery. There are different densities of foam underneath the upholstery for added comfort. And on the deck, there's snap-in C-deck matting. You can go with that or the non-skid fiberglass. These are the ultra comfort seats from Chaparral. Notice that they're ventilated in the back, wrap around for comfort, and the adjustments are within easy reach. You don't have to hunt underneath the seats for that. They also include flip-up bolsters. At 37 inches, I would call these seats seat and half width, and notice how they can swivel around to join the crowd in the cockpit. To the port hand side of the observer seat, there's a conveniently located grab handle, stainless steel beverage holder, and connectivity port is just above. Notice the wood trim that gives the boat an upscale look and it continues onto the door. There's a glove box on top of the console, another grab handle forward, and just inside, here's the head compartment. This has 47 inches of headroom, 33 inches of sitting headroom. An opening port is to the port side, stainless steel sink with pull-out sprayer, shelving to the forward bulkhead, and of course, a vacuum flush toilet. At the 24-inch walkthrough, the windshield is held in the open position by a magnetic catch. Closed, we can latch it and notice how both of the latches are interconnected. Now, at the starboard console, there's a door that acts as an air dam, and just behind the door is a pull-out refrigerator with storage just above. Now moving forward, we have the usual V-seat configuration, but because Chaparral carries the beam so far forward, there's 22 inches between the two seats. Depth here is 19 inches. Seats are very comfortable. Notice how they're molded down below. Flip up armrests at the top of the cap rails, full length grab rails, and we can move the table in from the cockpit. There's storage underneath the two side seats and under the forward seat, there's a built-in cooler. All the way forward, two six inch cleats. At the four peak, there's a flip nav light. Underneath the hatch, opened with a lift and lock latch. There's a Lumar windlass, standard Lumar windlass, I might add. 200 feet of road storage just underneath. Leads to a through the stem anchor roller and there's a stainless steel plow anchor attached to the end of the chain. Notice there's a cleat fitted to take the strain off the windlass. Controls are just alongside and at the helm. A seven inch step takes us to the 15 inch walkthrough to the swim platform. There's an acrylic gate to close the area off and just behind the gate, main breaker panel, battery switch and battery posts so that we can either jumpstart the boat if we need to or connect a water toy inflator. At the stern, a 56 inch wide seat gives us aft facing seating for watching the action while we're at anchor. We can even make it more comfortable by easily converting it into a chaise. 
Underneath the seat, there's a stereo over to the port hand side and also a transom trim switch. To the starboard bulkhead, there's a shower. There's a 56 inch wide swim platform that has two six inch pull up cleats to either side. But the real story here is this innovative center section. In fact, it's so innovative, it won the innovation award from the NNMA. Take a look. Not only does this create a swim step for reboarding, but also an aft-facing seat in the water. And notice we also have an extension of the non-skid sea deck matting. Now, as we move on to operations, the first thing I notice is right here at the stern, fuel fills to both sides of the boat. Not only can we fuel the boat from either side, but if we open up both of them, we can fuel faster from one side while air vents out of the other. The engine hatch opens on an electric lift, and now we can see the inner workings of that clever chaise lounge seat just up above. Inside the engine compartment, 430 horse Volvo Penta V8. Over to the port hand side, the engine start battery and the house battery are all within an easy reach and there's storage to the sides. Notice that we have easy access to all of the daily check and service components. Now we already mentioned that there are two screens at the helm, but we did mention the fact that they're both multifunction displays. So we can have instrumentation, moving map display, anything we want displayed on either one. Additionally, we have the Volvo Penta EVC gauge down below. So plenty of redundant systems. Electrical push button switches are to both sides on a reflective panel. Steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base and notice that the hub is free floating so it doesn't turn with the wheel. Stereo remote is over to the left hand side. There's an angled footrest just below. Over to the right hand side there's the digital throttle with the trim switch and a whole host of features. Beverage holder, small cubby and connectivity ports. Down below is the JL audio speaker. I have to appreciate the soft touch dash on top of the console. It's also hand stitched. The Chaparral 30 Surf has a length overall of 30 feet 2 inches, a beam of 9 feet and a draft of 37 inches. With an empty weight of 8,200 pounds, 35% fuel and 3 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 9,015 pounds. With a 430 horsepower Volvo Penta turning a forward drive, we reached a top speed of 47 miles per hour at 5,700 RPM. Best cruise came in at 4,000 RPM and 31.1 miles per hour. It was at that speed that the 12 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.6 miles per gallon and a range of 233 nautical miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 100 gallon total fuel capacity. With the throttle pinned, we reached planing speed in an average 4.5 seconds, accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 7.1 and cruised through 30 in 11.7 seconds. With the forward drive, she's quick to respond to the helm and exhibits a 20 degree roll into turns with very little loss of speed. Now when you come up on plane, again because it's a forward drive, you're going to want to just give it a couple of shots of up trim and that'll bring the bow to the position where the spray moves from midships back to the quarters and that's right where you want to be for its optimum running angle. In turns, she doesn't really bleed off speed, so you're not going to have to worry about adding speed in when you enter the turns. It's a comfortable boat to drive, and it's a lot of fun to drive. For surfing, we were running at 10.9 miles per hour, which brought a fuel burn of 8.5 gallons per hour. That means we could keep going for 10 and a half hours while still holding back that 10% reserve of fuel. She puts out a nice wake for a beginner to intermediate surfers with a clean face and moderate curl. Even tricks are no problem. With the surf gate system, we can select which side we want the wake on and even cross over on the fly. The boat's based on Chaparral's SSX model, so there's no surprises to the handling. She's got the upscale features of a Chaparral, and with the surf additions, a great boat became even more fun than it was before. And that's my full look at the 30 Surf from Chaparral. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.